Recently, Twilio was breached, and it affected a bunch of the services that rely on Twilio, like Signal. Now, Signal has a really high reputation when it comes to security and privacy and best practices, so it was really shocking when we started to see some of this news break saying that maybe up to 1900 Signal users had just been affected by some hack. Well, it turns out that really it was Twilio that had been breached, and in the end, there was only one Signal user who actually had their account compromised. That person was a motherboard writer who is a very technically savvy person and as soon as all of these things started to happen that were a bit strange, they were straight onto it. The first thing that they thought might have happened was a sim swapping attack. Now, in this instance, it wasn't a sim swapping attack, but it does actually bring us to the topic of our video today, which is sim swapping. So what is sim swapping attacks, how do they work, and why have they started to become such a prevalent method of trying to compromise the security of people's accounts? Now, the reason that sim swapping has become really common, especially over the last few years, it's been an attack that has existed for years, for a really long time. It's been possible for ages, um, but it's become increasingly common over the last few years, specifically because a lot of services increasingly, and more and more every day really, are using uh, text message authentication. So people are setting up 2FA and it's becoming a really standard security practice to have 2FA connected to any accounts that are basically meaningful whatsoever to you. Um, and a lot of the time that 2FA comes via a text message which is sent to your mobile phone number um, and then that's used to authenticate you. But there's an issue with this, of course, uh, which is what if somebody is able to somehow intercept or get that message to be redirected somewhere else. Now, what a SIM swapping attack is, is basically trying to get a specific phone number ported onto a new SIM. So when you achieve this, then you're gonna start receiving all of the text messages, all of the phone calls, um, all of the things which would ordinarily be routed to that phone number. Now with something like 2FA, there's a really obvious attack here where you can say, hey, I want to get the phone number of, for example, Jack Dorsey, and I'm gonna try and uh, do an account recovery, which is gonna rely on 2FA. I'm actually gonna receive that code and then I'm gonna try and recover the account. And that actually did happen to Jack Dorsey. Um, there was a really famous article, which will pop up here and pop a link down in the description where Jack Dorsey was actually the victim of a SIM swapping attack. But the question remains, how exactly do these attackers manage to convince in a lot most of the time a telecommunications or whoever your phone service provider is to change your phone number to their sim card how exactly does this work well increasingly there's a lot of information floating around on the internet about pretty much everybody on the entire planet and a lot of the time this information even if it might seem like really harmless um, or just benign information can be used to convince a you know random person on the phone at your telco provider that you know you are really Jack Dorsey and you really want to change your phone number to this new sim because something horrible has happened. Um, there's also of course the possibility that the person who might try to perform a sim swapping attack against you actually knows you or knows some of this personal information and is able to use that um, to conduct a social engineering attack against the telco and get that phone number swapped over to a new blank SIM. So what exactly is the solution here? Well, first of all, you don't need to use text messages or phone numbers for 2FA. There are other ways of providing two-factor authentication using apps like Authy, which don't necessarily rely on uh, a phone number verification, which is something that I would highly encourage when you have the option to do because it is a better option than using your phone number um, and giving that, that information away too readily. The other thing is of course to use services that don't rely on your phone number at all. Try to limit the amount of places where people might be able to find out what your phone number is because of course it's really hard to actually target that sim swapping attack until an attacker knows what number it is they're trying to change. Now obviously our phone numbers are information that we do share pretty readily a lot of the time and information that we really don't change very often so it's very possible that your phone number is already out there in a lot of places we've talked about that in the past but still if you can opt for services that aren't going to require your phone number aren't going to ask for your phone number like session for example and that's going to help limit how uh, vulnerable you are to a sim swapping attack uh, and that's really going to be really beneficial for your long-term security 
And in the end, we really think that phone numbers aren't a good way of providing authentication. And if we try to limit the, rely the reliance and the dependence that we have on them uh, for account security, then that's going to naturally decrease the amount of SIM swapping attacks that are gonna be successful or extremely harmful or impactful. Um, so that is a quick breakdown on what SIM swapping attacks really are, how they work, and what you can do to try and protect yourself from being affected by a SIM swapping attack. Thanks for tuning in everybody and we'll see you next time.